Welcome to my reading of Duplicity and Duress, Snap Factories in the Making by Aaron Vans, my pen name or pseudonym, or my assumed name. Um, I will be reading from the sixth chapter of the book, titled Bates and the Five Essentials of Victory, and before that I'll read a little excerpt from another book called The Art of War by Sun Tzu. So thank you and listen along. Trouble your adversary's government, sow dissension among his leaders by inciting jealousy and distrust, provoke undiscipline, furnish causes for discontent. Division unto death is our goal, which we will try to attain by discrediting and throwing suspicion on the sovereign's generals until the gossip reaches his inner sanctum. From The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And in fact, the five essentials of victory, which is part of the title of um, the chapter that I'm going to read from is from the book, The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And with that, you please be patient because I um, scrolled past the, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so Bates and the Five Essentials of Victory. Also, um, the art of war is taught in many schools, colleges, universities, almost as a necessary read. I did not read this book during my education. So it came um, into my awareness when I was walking dogs, <laughs> of all things, and also because of what I experienced in um, 2011, which led to, finally, the writing of this book. So here we go, Bates and the Five Essentials of Victory. Bates. How far into the darkness do we really want to go? That's probably the best way to begin a chapter on one of the most intriguing characters I would encounter prior to 2011. Someone who, no doubt, played a role in the lead up to the first seven days and for quite some time after. I think, anyway. Maybe, I mean, who knows, with him, it was hard to tell. J was his first initial. Bates, his last name. J. Bates. His name is best said with an oh brother kind of laugh, followed up by a <laughs> It's funny, you know, in a way he did remind me of someone from Psycho. I might have mentioned this before in the movie with the Bates Motel. Not because of his name, that is just a coincidence, but because, quote unquote, something evil that way went, if you know what I mean a darkness, an underlying wickedness that could turn its ugly face at any moment to the most unsuspecting of victims. But the wickedness was kept at bay by something unusual to those most evil among us. A wisp of humanity ran through those veins of his, and every single person sensed it just enough. He would never admit it, not for a second, but he was like everyone else in the end. He was. He just like we, needed love. And I guess it was this need, this fundamental, essential desire, continually, even if ever so slightly, radiating, radiating from his aura, that endeared people to him despite everything he did and said out of hand. The trickster, in the end, needed love. I'd figured it all out. This love through the evil facade thing that was going on with him, Bates was the kind of guy who expected people, and by people I mean every single person in the world, to disappoint. Period. The end. Finito. He knew it was only a matter of time. No one was immune. Anyone he engaged with was going to let him down, which might be why he treated everyone as if that other proverbial shoe would finally drop. He sat on guard and waited for the next caretaker, the next family member, the neighbors in his building, his lawyer, the next person he happened upon in the elevator to make the wrong move, slip up, leave, and or connive behind his back to get the best of him. This was a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and he learned it the hard way. He learned it from somewhere deep within the darkest recesses of Philadelphia. Neighborhoods so overrun with drugs and violence, they rightfully offer up to the city its legendary nicknames, Philadelphia, and yeah, sometimes, or these days, many times, Philadelphia. No one, and I mean no one, was to be trusted in the mind of Bates. Fate or happenstance, 
I was the next person he happened upon in the elevator. It would be closer to the truth to say I was stepping off the elevator while he was about to quote unquote step on, ride down to the lobby, and head out for errands. He came in contact, or I'm sorry, we came in contact with each other right around that gap between the elevator car and the foyer, foyer you step out onto. In this case, it was on the 23rd floor, but before Bates crossed the threshold into the moving shaft, I noticed I took notice of his fuzzy, cute, and less than six months old Bernese Mountain Dog. She, the Bernese, looked up with expectant eyes, ready to play, tugging on the leash to stall him in the hallway, her tongue panting in excitement with a string of jewel suspending itself from the tip of her jaw, slowly, very slowly stretching down, then back up, until finally making its way to the ground. I'd planned on darting around the corner in a rush to pick up Jorge and Elaine's King Kana Corso slash Pitbulls waiting patiently for their walk. But the sight of Bates and the Bernese stopped me dead in my tracks. Is, is that a... I bent down towards his puppy, letting her sniff my hand for acceptance. A Bernese mountain dog, he said, <laughs> half mockingly, finishing a sentence he finished a million times before because no doubt his puppy was a people magnet. And P.S. I think he liked it that way. I've never seen a Bernese puppy, only a full-grown one. What's her name? Bates spun around and scanned me from head to toe, a friend standing at his side waiting patiently. Murder, he said. No holds barred. By then the elevator doors had fully closed and his friend reached to press the down button to bring it back up while giving out a grunt and a sigh. Another person stopping to look at this dog was what her eyes said while she shifted from one leg to the other, waiting for the elevator to return. My comment was intended to be a passing comment, thinking Bates. The Bernese and his friend would have quickly boarded the ride down, but this name of the Bernese was a game changer, a big one. I'm sorry, what? I said. My feet came to a rest at the corner before I could turn out of his sight and down the hall to the right my back to him for a second, the left side of my head glancing ever so slightly over my shoulder, waiting for him to repeat his dog's name. Did you say murder, as in mur and dur? Murder, he said in a softer tone, shifting his head down as he said it, knowing his choosing this kind of name would cause a stir. Murder, but more like murda. He waved at one of his arms in a jerking motion and emphasized the ah at the end of murda by pronouncing an ah sound. Oh, I turned toward him cautiously, then made a grimace with my face. That's an unusual name for a dog, especially one so cute. My own candor surprised me, but it could not be stopped. I mean, if someone says his dog's name is murder, I don't think there's anything powerful enough to stand in the way of an instant gut reaction like that. What are you, a professional dog walker? He realized my interest was more than that of a typical passerby. Yeah, I'm, I'm just about to walk with dogs who live over here in apartment 2303. I pointed my finger in the direction around the corner. That's those dogs right next door to me, right? He said, turning to look at his companion, then back at me. Hey, I could use a dog walker. He jutted his hand out. How much do you charge? I hesitated. The simple matter of it is that I'd just gone full time with this whole dog walking business and needed to build up my clientele and income. Murda was borderline ridiculously cute and irresistible. Even the most stingy, grumpy, animal despising Cretan couldn't resist that face. The most lovable dog I'd ever seen, tilting her head back and forth, looking for answers, a way to understand these two legged beings who fed her, Kate uh, carted her around and asked her questions ending in high-pitched tones. Bates turned toward the elevator as the door slid open again. I quickly told him how much I charged and added, and depending on your situation, the cost of your tax, the cost could be a tax write-off. I mean, if you were training her as a service dog, that is. He spun back around and scanned me again, asking for a card. I fumbled around my bag, found one, and handed it to him. I'll call you, he said, as his one human, one dog party of an entourage gathered before the doors when the elevator chimed. In a way, I identified with him. This is difficult to explain, 
But I guess what I mean is, I knew him. Let's put it this way. There was something about him I recognized, only I certainly didn't know how to read others the way he did, and I didn't have the kind of money it appeared he had. I also wasn't, nor would ever be, a black man. And for that matter, I would never be a black man confined to a wheelchair. So thank you so much. This is one of my favorite chapters, someone I cared about deeply, um, and a lot of people uh, gave up on him because of, uh, because of the way he came across. So anyway, based on true events, Jay Bates, and until next time, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. And donate if you can. I really am looking for work, and I um, have very little family, and the family left has no money. So <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye.